this is the guidance video for case 3.1 in the instructor's manual. Your instructor might have assigned more or fewer requirements. Number one, copy the data in the amount field from the Somerville file to the column D in the data tab in the Negrini cycle. Here I have the Somerville file. These are the payments for the city of Somerville. I'm going to do a copy. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do a paste. And indeed, number one has been done, except that I need to run the, um, the Greeny cycle tests. And by doing that, I will highlight this row over here. I will get that plus sign, there it is, and give it a swift left, a double click, and it has now copied its way all the way down to the bottom. Um, have a quick look. It does go all the way to the bottom. And watch what happens. This is four, and it says blank, and this is because it only calculates the digits for dollar amounts greater than or equal to 10. We go to the first digit tab, there it is, and I've clicked and voila, that is indeed my first digit graph. Show a screenshot of your first digit graph, that was it. And uh, number two, what level of conformity does the data have to Benford's law? I need to jump from here to the tables tab. I've got the tables tab here, and this is my first and second digit sort of working area, and there is the mean absolute deviation, 00 0.00634. It says what level, we need to use table 4.2. This is table 4.2 in the graph. This is first digits. All you need to do is see where this number falls into which range, and that will be your conclusion on the right. Screenshot of the first two digits graph. It's actually all been done. It's pretty uh, slick, if I must say so myself. First two digit graph, I'm going across to the tab called first two. There it is. That's my first two digit graph. Screenshot, and you could use the snipping tool in Windows to get a screenshot of just the first two digit graph. What level of conformity does the data have to Benford's law, and now we are going to use the first two digits mean absolute deviation. There it comes in at 00194. We will go for number four, have a look here, and now we need to look here and see where 00194 falls, in which range, and then we have our conclusion on the right. Identify the first two digits that have the three largest spikes. A spike occurs when the actual proportion exceeds the expected proportion. And indeed, I want to know which of these that spike above the Benford's Law line are the largest, but the largest using the statistic called the Z statistic. And that is calculated for us right over here. So we want the largest three Z's, and we want to be sure that we spike above the Benford's Law line. Um, I don't like sorting the data. It's going to really mess up your table. I prefer doing something like home, conditional formatting, top bottom rules, top 10 items, but we can change it not to the top 10, but to the top three. And we can see our top three Z's are there. The first digits that they relate to are in this column over here. And so it's a case of what are the first two digits that relate to the largest Z's. And just be sure, have a look at the graph and see that we actually indeed go over the Benford's law line because we could always have a very significant difference where we go under. But a spike is always over exceeds the actual proportion. Did you expect the check payments to conform to Benford's law? Well, the answer is yes, if you read the book. And we're going back here to page 95. 
looks like. There it is. Accounting and finance data sets generally conform to Benford's law. Therefore, making the answer to number six, yes. And we expected it to follow Benford's law because accounting and finance data sets generally conform to Benford's law. The number of records used to create the graphs is less than the total number of records. The record counts can be seen in D30 to D33. And I'm referring to over here, D30 to D33. It is only using this number of records to prepare the first two digit graphs. You can do a check, you can do a total over there and see that you get to 55, 287. The reason that the number of records used for the graphs is less than the total number of records is because we have deleted all numbers less than 10. Less than 10 includes all positive numbers less than 10, all zeros, and all negative numbers. Uh, and the reason is given in the book, and it's basically because I don't want these small numbers to influence my uh, beautiful digit graphs. And number two, I never analyze positive and negative numbers together because the way that you um, uh, falsify things using positive numbers is diametrically opposed to the way you would do so using negative numbers. Create a new access database, import the summer of old data, no primary key. I'm good. The Negrini cycle can take a little bit of a rest there. I now have Somerville. This is Microsoft Access. I need to go blank database before Microsoft Access will do anything. I'm going to external data. I'm going to import and I'm going to a new data source from file Excel. And I need to browse and find this and I will find this on my computer here. Import, okay. Everything is good. Next. Everything is good. Next. No primary key, because we already have a primary key, although when we do idea, we'll see that they do duplicate their IDs here. Let's just follow our instructions and say, no primary key, next. Checkbook, finish. And we might have a little pause over here. While we're pausing, we can go and see the next. Run the query to calculate the first two digits as is shown in figure 3.7. And indeed, uh, we have this in the book. It should be page 99, if I remember correctly. There we go. So I'm indeed right here at figure 3.7, and uh, it's still importing. Well, I'm going to take a pause. I'm back. Close. I'm going to close. Well, I'm going to do that. There we go. And table one, I will delete. It's just, there we go. It deleted itself. I now need to calculate the first two digits of each of these amounts. And for example, the first two digits of the first one are 9, 4, 1, 6, 9, 8, 1, 5, and the like. I'm just checking my record count at the bottom. Record 1 of 55, 7, 4, 6. I should be good. I'm going to go create, not a query, but in query design. There we go. And this, uh, depending on your version, this changes from uh, version to version. I need to query something, and I really only have this table here. So I'm going to go across and give it a swift left double click, and there it moves up. Let's go again. Create. Query design. Bring checkbook across. There we go. And this is a select query, and I'm hoping it doesn't do what it did before. I want the criteria to be greater than or equal to 10. And I now want the calculated field first to 
colon, value, VAL, of left, parentheses again, amount, comma two, close. And we should be good. We want to show both of these fields. The criteria is greater than or equal to 10, and that you get from here. Run the query. We are now going to simply calculate the first two digits graph. And when I run this, um, I'm going to the top left there. I'm in query design, and I have this exclamation point run. And now it's telling me that the first two digits of that are 75322520. It's done it correctly. I'm going to go back to design view. I'm going to save the query. And we'll do query digits calc. So this is uh, calculating. And let's see if I want to add anything to... I'll do query digits calc ft for first two. OK. We're good. I'm going to close this and go back here. And what it says is count the number of each first two digit combinations. Here we go. We have an example here. I need to do the count. I'm going to go back create query design. I'm now going to bring the query in here. Let's see if I can jump it across. I have. I'm going to go first two. I'm going up to the sigma sign. Left click. Now I get the group by that I wanted. Group by first two. I could have jumped it from there to there. Count, not group by, but count first two. First two sort, it'll default to sorting ascending, but we're good here. And now it's going to calculate how many 10s, 11s, 12s, 13s of each we have. I'm going to run, and here we go. I have the count of first two, and I'm going to save this query as QRY. First to count, we'll do OK. And it told me I have 2,609 first two digit one zeros, 2,013 first two digit 11s. I'm good. So a screenshot as is shown in panel A of figure 3.9. Let's see if I can find 3.9 quickly. There it is. Screenshot of this. Uh, you, you have different, not, you, you are not using the same data set, so you have different counts. Do the first two digit counts agree? And indeed they should. I'm going to go back to access. I'm going to copy this. Copy. I'm going to go back into Excel, and here's my tables. And these are the counts according to Excel. I'm going to insert a column, and I'll insert another column just for fun, because this is all very exciting. I'm going to go here, do a right click, and paste. And these are now my access counts. And I leave it up to you to compare this to this. You don't exactly have to compare each one going down and taking too much time. You can simply go equals the Excel count minus the access count. And what you want are zeros, and you want zeros all the way down. Do they agree? The answer here should be yes. If the answer is not yes, something has gone wrong. That is our guidance for case 3.1.